Champagne gang, fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sip, Savor, and Spill. Come on in, grab your glass, kick your legs up on one of those chase lounges, and let's get ready to get into it. Now before we do, let me quickly say this. So, I used to have a disclaimer that I would play in the beginning of all of my videos. And I really had to pray because I had some people in my comments that were probably about to take me to a place that I didn't want to go. Not for this channel. So what God really showed me was that sometimes in trying to repel things, you actually invite them to you. So I felt like in having that warning in the beginning of my videos that was talking about your negativity being deliciously repackaged and promptly returned to sender, that inadvertently what I was doing was inviting negativity to me. Because you know how people are. You say no, people want to say yes. You say go left, People want to see what happens if they go right. So I feel like in having that warning in the beginning, it was inviting people to try me. Mm -hmm. So instead of tiptoeing to the gates of hell and dragging people out, I said, you know what? Let me just remove the warning because I don't want to invite any negativity into my space. And I do understand that some people are just hell bent on being hellions. That's the way you are. It's all good. Your negativity agitates my positivity the way my positivity agitates the demons on the inside of you. So I get it. So we won't have the warning in the beginning anymore. And I will no longer be spending my time focused on negativity in the comments. Baby, you'll just get blocked or removed because I don't have time. Anyone who's been a part of this channel for any period of time knows this is a safe space. It's a community of thinkers. It's a community of adults who know how to have adult conversations without the negativity, without feeling like everything has to be a drag. Everything has to be a get you together. Everything has to be a get into it. But I also understand you cannot control the Misery Loves Company community. So if you come and spew your venom in my safe space, you will be blocked, deleted, removed, the door. Because there's a lot of channels that you can choose from who will engage you on your male bovine feces. Bullshit. This isn't one of them. And I refuse to take away from my champagne gang and my fizz fam and my confidants to deal with you mis- mm -mm, mm -mm. See, I have something that a lot of you lack. And it's something called conviction. Mm -hmm. I stop and think about what I say before I say it in an effort not to offend or cause harm or hurt to anyone else. And I get it. That's not something that's taught these days. You know, the action of thinking before you speak or in some of your cases before you type because somehow you think because you can do it that you should. You know, the Bible says something about this. It says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Do you know what that means? I'm sure some of you don't. So let me help you. It means just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should. So there's a lot of things that I get ready to say that God will shut me up real quick because I believe in listening to something higher than me for direction. Maybe some of y'all should try the same. Now on to today's story. So everybody knows right now we're gearing up for this presidential election. We also know that Biden recently dropped out of the presidential campaign and he has stood behind Kamala to take his place. And right now, if you had to ask me, who would I vote for between these two? My answer would be neither. And that's for a few reasons. One of the things that I hate about when we get to the presidential election every four years is the candidates never take out the time to talk about what they're going to do for the country. They spend majority of their time bringing up the problems with the other candidate. And see, with me, when I'm thinking about my vote and who I'm going to vote for, and I'm listening to you, I could care less about the other candidate at that moment. I want to hear about your policies. I want to hear about your plans. I want to hear about the changes that you want to bring. And I want to hear how. We kind of never get to the how for me. It's a bunch of promises. I promise to do this. I promise to do that. We're not going to do this. It's a bunch of finger pointing, 
but we never fully get to the grassroots of what each candidate is going to bring to the office of the presidency. Trump? Trump is definitely a no for me, but that's not to say that I think Kamala is a yes. I don't know enough about our policies yet. I'm still researching. For the most part, a vice president is the background to the president's foreground. So you really don't hear a lot about what the vice president is doing behind the scenes because all focus is on the president. But now with what, 100 days left, a little over 100 days left until the election, now she's being thrust in front of us. And to be honest with you, a lot of people are going to vote for her for the simple fact they don't like Trump. It won't be based on policies. It won't be based on beliefs. It won't be based on preserving the democracy. It'll be based solely on not having Trump. And I can't vote like that. Here's one of my biggest issues with Trump, right? And I say it over and over again. Trump is the wild card. And I still say he's the wild card. But the reason I say he's the wild card is because Trump has allegiance to Trump. He does not have allegiance to the Republican Party. He does not have allegiance to the democracy. He does not have allegiance to the United States of these Americas. He has an allegiance to himself. So it doesn't matter who puts him in office. Trump is going to do what Trump wants to do. And that's what makes him a wild card. So here's my problem with this, right? See, I see something in Trump that a lot of y'all don't see. I see danger. Trump is very dangerous. He is. But wild cards generally are. And if you don't believe me, the simple fact that he allowed Amber Rose to speak at the Republican convention, which goes against everything Republican. Hell, she doesn't even believe in God, atheist, Satanism, which goes against the very stout Christian values that the Republican Party thrives on. This is the same Amber Rose who is the face of the slut walk, which initially was started in support of great victims, because you know we can't say the word, calling for an end to victim blaming and shaming due to how they were dressed or their appearance. But then it became a representation of women who wanted to be sexually free without being shamed for it. In quote, being in charge of our sexual lives should not mean that we are opening ourselves to an expectation of violence, regardless if we participate in sex for pleasure or work. No one should equate enjoying sex with attracting S.A. So basically, because I love sex and dress sexy doesn't mean I'm inviting assault. And that's true. No means no. But this is the type of thinking that this free sexual society where everyone's just screwing like jackrabbits is what creates babies out of wedlock, single family homes, which goes against the conservative values of the Republicans and what they call the nuclear family. Husband, man, wife, woman, children, fence, doll. Here's the thing, right? Whether or not Trump was the one who invited her, there is a such thing to me as silence is consent. What that means is if you are silent about a thing, it generally means you support it. And in saying nothing, you are saying everything. Because the simple fact that you would allow someone who goes against the very values of your party and the values your party stands on, and you allow them to speak on your behalf, in my opinion, means you are going against the values of your party. Wild card, unpredictable. Hello, my name is Amber Rose. I'm a model and entrepreneur. Thank you. But most importantly, I'm a mother. My whole world revolves around providing for my children, keeping them safe, and giving them an opportunity for a better life. That's something that unites all American parents. Whether we're Republicans, Democrats, Conservatives, or Liberals, we all want a better country for our children. But I'm here tonight to tell you, no matter your political background, that the best chance we have to give our babies a better life is to elect Donald Trump President of the United States. Now you may be wondering why I'm up here telling you this. I'm no politician and I don't want to be. But I do care about the truth. And the truth is that the media has lied to us about Donald Trump. I know this because 
for a long time, I believed those lies. So I'm here to set the record straight. The first person I knew who supported Donald Trump was my father. I was shocked. My entire family is racially diverse. And I believe the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies, and I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. These are my people. This is where I belong. <laughs> so I let go of my fear of judgment of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, and I put the red hat on too. Thank you. Love you too. I never felt more free and more love for my country than I do now. I want to thank my father, who's in the audience tonight, for opening my eyes. He served over 20 years in the U.S. military. Thank you for your service, Dad. and Melania for the first time. He was kind and generous and funny as hell. Very funny. The first lady was gracious and smart with a smile that will brighten up any room. If you're watching this tonight, you know our country is in trouble. Just like me. When you go to the store and buy food for your family, you're shocked. When you fill up your gas tank, you're pissed. I know I am. <laughs> And when you turn on the news, you are just exhausted. Inflation is out of control. And you know in your heart, it was not like this under Donald Trump. My message to you tonight comes from a humble place. The left told me to hate Trump, and even worse, to hate the other side, the people who support him. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to put money back in our pockets and good food on our kids' plates. Yes. <laughs> or, as Trump would say, it's a vote to make America great again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look, this dude right here just want to see all that ass on her. <laughs> but in an interview that she did for a podcast for Laura Trump, who is Donald Trump's daughter-in-law and the Republican National Committee co-chair, she said, for me, Donald Trump is the epitome of an alpha male. He's there to protect, provide, make sure the citizens of the U.S. are in good economy, protecting us. I feel protected with Donald Trump. I feel safer with him in office. If you want prices to go down, if you want inflation to go down, if you want gas prices to go down, if you want to feel protected in your neighborhood with your children, if you're American and you're here and you're born here, Donald Trump is for you. He doesn't care if you're black, white, gay. He does not care. It's not about that. Let's stop race baiting. It's not about that. He's here for the American people, period. He's for your children. He's for women. He's for all of us. Is she looking for a pimp or a president? I'm confused. But are you sure about that? Prices can't go down until they find a way to combat the deficit we're in right now, which is usually through raising taxes. And he's here for 
for women? Well, you better clarify what you mean by women. And that is to say, you would need to specify you were born women because he has a serious problem with gender affirming terms and LGBTQ having health care for gender reassignment and hormone pills and treatment. As a matter of fact, him and Project 25 are going to get rid of health care needed by individuals in the LGBTQ community. I did a video on Project 25. Go check it out. And I know people are saying Trump never said he's endorsing it. He doesn't have to. His name is all through it. 920 pages with his name all through it. If he doesn't support it, wouldn't you think he would tell them to remove his name from it? That's the question. Trump does a lot of stuff in plain sight. People just don't seem to see it. Number two. But number one, you don't have to endorse a thing as long as you're speaking the language in it. Immigration, day one, he's doing a mass deportation effort. Do we know if that means those who just came, those who have been working and living here for a while, or just those without a car? No, because he hasn't made it clear. Wild card. He also just stated if he's elected after the election, you won't have to vote again. Do you know why that is? Because he's trying to fight the two-term rule. He wants to be the next Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. He wants to have total control and he wants only people in the White House that are devoted believers and followers of him. Dictator. Totalitarian rule. It's Trump's entitlement and arrogance that makes him so dangerous. And given he's just received immunity from deeds performed while in office, he would be untouchable. Why is that bad? Well, I'll tell you. Because right now there are pro-Trump hate groups rallying and marching down streets with flags with swastikas on them and guns in mass. And here's what a lot of people don't understand about the right to bear arms. Do you not understand that you can take a long barrel gun and strap it across your shoulder, leave out of your house, and the police can't touch you as long as it's registered to you? You've always had the right to bear arms. The CCW, concealed carry, concealed carry gives you the right to conceal the arms you are bearing in your purse, your pocket, your sock, wherever. But without your CCWs, you have to carry it in the open so others know you have a gun on you. So for all of the people who ran out and got CCWs thinking, oh, now I can carry a gun, you've always had that right. But it's just another setup to trap you because a lot of states don't have a self-defense law. So if you pull it and your life is not in imminent danger, someone's trying to rob you or unalive you with a weapon. You're going to jail. So you can't be getting jumped and pull out your gun. In many states, that's not considered cause for using deadly force. A lot of this stuff is a setup to send you right to jail. And if you're in jail, or if you have a record, if you're on probation, you can't vote. Your rights are basically what they say they are. But you have all of these white supremacy groups boldly marching and spewing hate. White power groups training in the woods, preparing for whatever this is they're preparing for. Hug your shield to the left. Okay. Going to the business. Lock that lock. And you want to you want no gap in between the shield. So leave with your left and close the gap to the right. Okay? So just use your imagination. Okay, dress up in line. So you want everything to be straight and need more. Okay. Lock that lock. Okay. Stand up a little bit. Move the unit. Yeah. And you can step with your left, close the gap to the right. Okay? Back to the Okay. Back up the Okay. Lock step. Lock. 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 Good. So this throw a little bit of aggression in there. Okay? Because if you got a threat coming your way, you're going to be more aggressive, right? Okay, do it again. Look, there. Look. There you go. Look at that stump. I want to hit those boots on the ground. You know what I mean? Okay, do it again. 
box staff. What? There you go. Okay. You hear your beat? Yeah. Da -da -da -da. You want to hear one time. You know what I'm saying? In unison. Okay. Lock step. Lock! Bingo! There you go. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, come up. Come up. Come up. Come up. Get more. See how, see how you're standing in front of it? And when you're at 800 standing in formation, look to the left, look to the right. Make sure you're lined up in me. Obviously, no one's to your right. Lock step. Lock! Bingo! I like it. And well, that's pretty much it. With the lock step lock. Okay. That is a... Um, good exactly. But if you're on a shield team, which some of you probably will be, and all of you need to be familiar with anyway, remember this. You know, there's going to be no excuse for to get it, okay? Let's, run this. Let's do that ten times in a row. Okay. And when a woman walked past and thought this was a gang, their response was, bitch, we are a gang. My problem? When did Trump call for a stop to this? When? When has he spoken out against the hate groups that are marching through the streets with swastikas on flag? When did he say there's no place in America for this type of hate, whether you agree with the immigrants being here or not? This is not how we respond. When he refused to tell the Proud Boys to stand down, and we saw what happened January 6th. As a matter of fact, recently, this is what he said. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. Whose blood do you think it's going to be? Not theirs. Let me show you who began its investigation into Mark Prieto after a confidential informant who spoke with him more than a dozen times over three years at various gun shows said Prieto called for a mass shooting targeting blacks, Jews, and Muslims before the 2024 presidential election. During a January gun show in Phoenix, Prieto tried recruiting that informant and an undercover FBI agent. According to court records, Prieto wanted to carry the plan out in Georgia because, he says, when he was a kid, that was one of the most conservative states in the country. More specifically, Prieto wanted to carry out the attack at a rap concert because he said there would be, quote, a high concentration of African Americans. During a February meetup at a gun show, Prieto began offering details of the plan, including the number of guns to be used. During this meetup, Prieto sold that undercover agent a gun for $2,000 and said he would also like to use grenades during the attack because it can, quote, cause panic. At another gun show in March in Prescott Valley, Prieto provided more specific details. That attack would take place in Atlanta at State Farm Arena on May 14th or 15th. Performing that night was rapper Bad Bunny. During that gun show, Prieto sold an AR-15 rifle to that undercover agent for $1,000 and told them to, quote, bring as many magazines as the gun could carry. In the following weeks, agents continued to monitor Prieto's movements. During an April meetup, Prieto continued to fine tune his plans, even discussing heading east to do reconnaissance, but emphasized the attack, quote, must happen prior to the election and as soon as possible. Authorities arrested Prieto back on May 14th as he crossed into New Mexico. Investigators say he had several guns in his truck, even more found at his home in Prescott while executing a search warrant. If he really cared about black and brown people and people of color, don't you think he would have spoke out against this? Don't you think this would headline his campaign so that stuff like this won't happen? Tonight, a loving father is sharing the terrifying moment someone broke into his home and attacked his children. And let's just say dad made the suspect regret that decision. Mm, big time. Police say the suspect is in custody and will be charged. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias has the story. Went around, ducked down, looked, and then just rushed through the door. Bobby Tucker says a stranger who was screaming and growling came into his home and attacked two of his children around 5.30 p.m. Thursday. He attacked my 14-year-old son from the back. He jumped on him, choking him out to the ground, and then he moved on to my 11-year-old. When I came out, he was standing about right here over the top of my son. Tucker, who works as a security guard, says he was in the back of the house with his youngest son when he heard the commotion. He rushed out from his hallway and saw the man hitting his 11-year-old son. I admit I blanked out for a while. I probably scared my kids too. 
because I, I just kept hitting the guy, hitting the guy, and I could hear them saying someone call 911. Citrus Heights police responded within five minutes and took the man into custody. He was out cold, unresponsive. The paramedics tried to get him to wake up and respond. He, he was just out. Police aren't releasing the man's identity yet and can't say if he was on drugs or had mental health problems. The father of four says his door was unlocked at the time because his children had just taken the trash out. He later posted these photos of the man, one of him entering his home and the other with him being taken out on a stretcher. He definitely picked the wrong house to come into. Tucker says he wants this to serve as a warning to other homeowners. Definitely get you something inside your home to protect yourself, whether it's mace or firearm. The father of four says his focus now is getting his sons through the trauma of being attacked. Looking in to try and get them at least a little bit of therapy so they can talk about it and not be afraid and scared because your home is supposed to be your sanctuary. In Citrus Heights, Roxanne Elias, ABC 10. Not to mention, he wants to rescind President Joe Biden's 2022 executive order on policing, which would eviscerate one of the most substantial federal actions on police reform since George Floyd's murder and reverse important changes to the use of force standards, including restrictions on chokehold. He also wants to mass reincarcerate thousands of people on house arrest. And the most glaring fact of all, Sonia Massey, the woman who was brutally unalived in her home by the police. And there was not a word from President Trump about it. Not a word. I searched it. Not a word of encouragement to her family. Not a word regarding the police's actions that resulted in a death. Nothing. But he did come out and say this, though. Crime is so bad in the season. One of the things I said is we're giving immunity. We're going to guarantee people you know they lose a law enforcement person they go and stop people from robbing stores you go to some of these departments so where 500 people walk into the stores they walk out with air conditioning they strip the whole store the company goes out of business the store is vacant for 25 years the whole city becomes a slum and if you do anything as a law enforcement person they take away your house they take away your family they take away your pension we're going to make it so that we're going to give them essentially immunity. 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 So in the wake of loss of life of this beautiful black woman, whose life should not have been taken away from her the way that it was, in the wake of that, and in the midst of running a presidential campaign, a former sitting president gets behind the mic and he says he's going to give the police essential immunity so that they can basically do whatever they want to do and can't be touched. And you don't see a problem with this? Or is it that we're just not paying attention to the things that he's saying when he speaks? What is going on is my question. Who are the individuals that you think he's talking about when he's talking about rioting and looting? Who do you think those individuals are? Do you think they look like him? When he says give police complete power, you do know that means deadly force as well, right? Do whatever you feel like you need to, to abolish the threat. And if you are the threat and they have immunity, what do you think that means? What do you think that makes the new world order look like that he wants to bring into play? Don't worry, I'll wait. Just police running around doing whatever they want to in the name of the law? In the name of law and order? Who's law and order? Who gets to decide what that law and order is? Oh, maybe the one who gave them immunity. The one priding himself on law and order with 34 felonies. Him? You want a convicted felon to decide what law and order is and what it looks like? Trump? Use a lot of racist rhetoric in the midst of his speeches and I really don't know where we are when we are listening and paying attention to it. But you don't have to listen to me. His nephew just came out with a book about it. Check this out. A witness is now describing in excruciating detail Donald Trump's apparently enthusiastic historic use of the n-word. The quote, n-words. I recall him saying disgustedly, look what the N words did. I don't even like this version of it, by the way. And we obviously cleaned it up for YouTube, but that is Fred Trump writing that, describing Donald Trump in a racist outburst. So this is coming in a book, All in the Family, The Trumps 
and how we got this way. It's his nephew who was with him, spent a lot of time with him and saw him do this. And so uh, in response to this coming out, we do have to give you a disclaimer a response, I guess, from the Trump campaign. Uh, Trump spokesperson, Stephen Chung, who I believe is uh, legally and constitutionally not allowed to say anything true, called the account in the book completely fabricated and total fake news of the highest order. And so if the use of fake news doesn't already tell you that this isn't honest, he goes on to say, anyone who knows President Trump knows he would never use such language and false stories like this have been thoroughly debunked. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, so here is the actual account. So this is in back in the 1970s. So this is Fred Trump talking about being at the house of his grandparents as the parents of Donald Trump, who I'm sure were just swell people. And he says it was just a normal afternoon for preteen me. Then his uncle arrived. Donald was peed. Boy, was he peed. Trump says his uncle showed him his I don't even know, that's a particular type of white Cadillac Eldorado, I don't know, fancy white, I guess, convertible. In its retractable canvas top, quote, there was a giant gash at least two feet long and another shorter gash next to it. So the car had been disfigured, which would be annoying, I'm sure, and people react to that. Well, here's how Donald Trump allegedly react to it with the quote that we showed you before. N-words, look at what the N-words did. And Fred says, I knew this was a bad word. His uncle, importantly, had not seen whoever damaged his car. Instead, he saw the damage, then went straight to the place where people's minds sometimes go when they face a fresh affront across the racial divide. So I want to be very clear, if he had seen who'd done it, that wouldn't make it cool. But he hadn't, he just saw that it was damaged and he was like, you know what? I bet it was someone of a different race that did this and instantly he filled in the gaps. If something bad happened, it's clearly those people that did it. And I'm gonna now rant in an incredibly explicitly racist fashion in front of my family about how mad I am, I, I am at them. Lisa and I were deeply passionate about something we lived every day. The challenges for individuals with intellectual and development disabilities and their families. Our son, William, our third child, was born on June 30th, 1999. Within 24 hours, he went from seemingly healthy to fighting for his life in the NICU. Raising him was different from the start. William was diagnosed at three months with infantile spasms, a rare seizure disorder, which in William's case altered his development physically and cognitively. We had so many questions. What would the future hold for someone like William? How far could he go? How much could he learn? Would he ever have the chance to do things that other children would do? We just didn't know. It took 15 years before his medical team could accurately pinpoint the cause of his condition, a KCNQ2 mutation, a genetic misfire that the doctors called a potassium channel deletion. And so the article then goes into the courage this family had and the work they did to help their son. And then when Donald Trump was in the White House, they were trying to bring other families that have persons with disabilities you know, into the White House in order to help them and to um, help shape American policy as it relates to Americans with disabilities. But here's what Donald Trump said during a meeting with his nephew, Fred, about Fred's son and about people who have disabilities. This is how it was described by his nephew. His nephew said, look, he sounded interested and concerned. I thought he had been touched by what the doctor and advocates in the meeting had just shared about their journey with their patients and their own family members. But I was wrong. Those people, Donald said, trailing off, the shape they're in, all the expenses, maybe those kinds of people should just die. And then Fred, Donald Trump's nephew, said, I, I truly did not know what to say. He was talking about expenses. We were talking about human lives. For Donald, I think it was really about the expenses, even though we were there to talk about efficiency, smarter investments, and human dignity. I turned and walked away. And then in the article also, Fred Trump describes a phone call he had with Donald Trump about funding to support medical care for his son, William, who is disabled. And Donald Trump responded to him, I don't know, Trump told his nephew. He doesn't even recognize you. Maybe you should just let him die and move down to Florida. To which Fred thought after the call, wait, 
What did he just say? That my son doesn't recognize me? That I should just let my son die? Did he really just say that? Should I let my son die so I could move down to Florida? You first, because what? Real quick, what is the charge for slapping the shish kebab out of a former sitting president? Because ain't no way you're going to sit in my face and tell me because my child has a... See y'all listen, I have a son with a disability. My son is autistic. He has Asperger's syndrome. It is a real thing. Amanda Seal with your dumb ass. There's no way you're gonna sit in my face and tell me I should just let my son die. Are you serious? And y'all don't have a problem with the rhetoric that this man spews out and you want to give him ultimate power? Then he harped on the fact that Biden had cognitive issues. He harped on it over and over and over again. He ain't no better. Okay, don't listen to me, listen to him. I think you should take a cognitive test like I did. I took a cognitive test and I aced it. Dr. Ronnie, Dr. Ronnie Johnson, does everyone know Ronnie Johnson, congressman from Texas? He was the White House doctor. How good did at least step in that game. You know, we've endorsed Dr. Oz. We've endorsed JP, right? JD Mandel. And he's doing great. Jimmy Connors is a, Jimmy. Jimmy Connors is good. He's also happy. Mike Bolton. John Bolton is here. Mike Bolton, as you know, is in Russia. And there was progress today. I look forward to solving. Thank you, Steve. It was Trump's fault. It's always Trump's fault. Can it ever be like a Rick Gates's fault? I mean, uh, it's always Trump's fault, Rick. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. You know, they did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it because of lots of things like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Uh, we have some of our great business leaders and leaders, period, right behind me. Uh, I may ask Marilyn Lockheed. Uh, we appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Yes, please. Mr. Kurt, thank you very much for your time. You know, it's interesting. Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Arrest their leading political opponent, and leading by a lot, including Obama. Put, I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war today. You heard that, nuclear. Thanks for giving your first comments on the bill on this show. It means a lot to us. We appreciate it, sir. Thanks a lot. You have a deal. Thanks a lot. Bye. Joe Bright, this guy is... Just the worst. So will Christian ever run for president against you? And you heard the prime minister. You heard uh, Bet your home. Maybe have uh, Matt Blum speak next because he's been so incredible in so many ways. He fights so hard. He loves his state. He loves the people. A new, think of it, a new branch of the United States military, United States Armed Forces called Air Force. I never talked about that. That's something we never talked about. But well, what we just saw, we just left pleasure. Yeah, a very big hello to a place where we've done very well. Sioux Falls, thank you very much, Sioux Falls. Thank you. So Sioux City, let me ask you, and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired, we would be in World War II, very quickly, the worst president in the history of our country will be a fading nightmare. He'll be a fading, I have fading memory. With all of that being said, I cannot say that because I don't want him that I can fully endorse her. I don't know enough about her policies to say because I don't like one, I want the other. That's the problem and that's what we do in elections and it's where we mess up because how do we know that one is better than the other if we don't fully know what their policies are going to be. So I can't tell you to vote for. I can't. It's not my responsibility. I said it before and I'll say it again. You need to vote based on your beliefs. Vote based on who you think is going to be the best for the economy. And if you can't select either, I, listen. I don't know where that leaves us. But I went over to one of my favorite news outlets, TikTok. 
And here's what some of them had to say about Kamala. Check this out. For everyone saying that Kamala Harris didn't do anything when she was VP, please, for $5,000, do not use Google. Tell me what any vice president has ever done during their term that was notable that you noticed. The vice president's job is to take a back seat and support while the president does everything that's forward facing. And it's funny because when Joe Biden was VP, the only things I really remember him doing was making cool videos with Barack. But when he ran for president, I didn't hear that same. He didn't do anything when he was VP from people. So I wonder why y'all are saying it now. Can we all just be for real? I am born and raised California, meaning that Kamala Harris has been my attorney general and my senator. I also grew up in the Bay Area. So I was very aware when she was DA in San Francisco. So being as I'm from California, she's from California, she's actually represented me for my state, I feel that I have room to talk here. Like how when she was DA in San Francisco, her conviction rate was 87% for homicides, along with a 90% conviction rate for felony gun-related violations. She created a hate crime unit which focused on the LGBTQ community. Or how about when she was Attorney General of my state of California and she got two of the largest recoveries in California history. She got two settlements with Comcast. She got the state 44 million after the big oil spill in California. When she was Senator, she sat on the Committee on the Budget, the Intel Committee, the Judiciary Committee, the Committee on Homeland Security and Affairs. Now these are just the bare bones of what I'm talking about in areas in which she reps specifically California or a city in California. This entire list is things that she's accomplished since she's been vice president. Pause and read. So when people say she's not qualified or doesn't have the experience to be president, please feel free to share this video. But again, that's just like barely touching the surface. You won't have to get out and vote. You won't have to do it anymore. Four years, it'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore. In four years, you won't have to vote again. No, I haven't lost my mind, and no, this is definitely not about Harris. That's what Trump said tonight in Florida. Let's just uh, let that sink in a little bit. He's gonna fix it so we never have to vote again if we would just elect him. Let's just elect him and we'll never have to worry about voting again. Yeah, that's what we're worried about. I left out the part where he was going, Christians, I love you. I, Christians, just get out and vote. Christians, Christians, I'm a Christian. Love you, Christians. I left that part out, but we already knew that, right? But I think what we didn't know was what he's now saying out loud and proud. If we just elect him, We'll never have to go through that pesky voting process again. Did the Simpsons just predict that Kamala Harris is going to win the 2024 presidential election and become the first female president? This old clip from the Simpsons literally gives me the chills because Lisa even explains that she becomes the first woman president and she explains how Donald Trump ruined the economy. And honestly, the creator of The Simpsons scares the shit out of me just because how much shit actually comes true that is on the TV show. Like, I don't know if he's the feds. I don't know if he's the ops. I don't know what the hell he is. But let me tell you, the way you be hitting on different shit is crazy. And there's even a map showing how close the race actually is. And I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to look at all of these states and see if this is exactly the same because that's how much The Simpsons scare the shit out of me. But I'm going to go ahead and roll you guys this clip of The Simpsons predicting Kamala Harris winning the 2024 presidential election. And you guys let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Excellent question. Yes, I am proud to be America's first straight female president. <laughs> Helen? Wasn't I wearing a hat? Yes. Yes, you were. Now, in conclusion, my administration will focus on the three R's. Reading, writing, and refilling the ocean. Thank you very much. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. The country is broke? How can that be? Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, he has already, yes, you may clap. <laughs> 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 
In one term, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who have served two terms in office. And I first came to know President Biden through his son, Bo. We worked together as attorneys general in our states. And back then, Bo would often tell me stories about his dad. He would talk about the kind of father and the kind of man that Joe Biden is. The qualities that Bo revered in his father are the same qualities that I have seen every day in our president. His honesty, his integrity, his commitment to his faith and his family, his big heart, and his love, deep love of our country. And I am firsthand witness that every day our President Joe Biden fights for the American people and we are deeply, deeply grateful for his service to our nation. I'm a little worried because since Sunday afternoon, I haven't been that worried. And that, and that is that. And that is deeply troubling. I personally blame our next president, Kamala Harris. Everybody, every, it's what I hear. I'm just, I'm just reading the papers here. Everybody's been buzzing over her ascent to the top of the Democratic ticket. And now we've got some hard data to back up all that enthusiasm. But I want to be cautious and just preface this by saying polls have been wrong all year. Polls don't vote, people do. This far out, it's just a snapshot of the present opinion and you cannot place any of your trust in them, okay? Yesterday, a Reuters Ipsos poll had Vice President Kamala Harris leading former President Donald Trump 44 to 42. <laughs> This moment changed the 2024 U.S. presidential race. And these moments... The, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with... Um, and obviously this moment... It is my great honor to have Joe's endorsement. With Democrats rallying behind Kamala Harris, the winning streak Trump was on suddenly ground to a halt. And Trump, a twice-impeached convicted felon, who was also found liable for sexual abuse, now finds himself facing off against a former prosecutor and attorney general. Trump has remade the Republican Party in his own image. It's far more populist, not necessarily in terms of policy, uh, but rhetorically it's become more anti-Wall Street, more anti-rich, and you can see the way that that resonates with the enormous rally crowds that Trump gets if Trump wins, if Republicans win the House and Senate. Trump will be able to do basically anything he wants to. My question, um, do you believe in the mandatory buyback of quote-unquote assault weapons? And whether or not you do, how does that idea not go against fundamentally the Second Amendment? Yeah, so, um, great question. I do believe that we need to do buybacks, and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, let's be clear about what assault weapons are. They have been designed to kill a lot of human beings quickly. They are weapons of war with no place on the streets of a civil society. I've seen assault weapons kill babies and police officers. So one, I'll tell you when elected president, if the United States Congress continues to fail to have the courage to do something about this, I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. But we still have to deal with the over two million assault weapons that are currently in the streets of America. And so a buyback program I, is a good idea. Now we need to do it the right way. And part of that has to be, you know, to buy back and give people their value, the financial value of, 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 of what they have and not just take things from people that, that have value without compensating them. We need to do it the right way, but we've got to deal with the fact that these people in Washington, D.C., People know I started my career as a prosecutor. You may not know why. One of the reasons is my best friend in high school, I learned, was being molested by her stepfather. So she came to live with us, and I decided at a young age I wanted to do the work of fighting to protect women and children from harm. And the idea that these laws would make no exception even for a survivor of a violation to their body, and to tell that woman, that person, you don't have a right to make a decision about what happens to your body next. 
It's immoral. One of the issues that I have dealt with in the last few years that is associated but has been highlighted because of technology is what the, the press calls revenge porn. Mm. But I've said stop using that term because the term revenge porn, one, revenge, suggests that she's done something wrong that then deserves this kind of response, which of course is ridiculous. What she did is she was in a consensual relationship, taking photographs, sharing them in a consensual relationship, mm -hmm. and then she breaks up with dude. And he's upset about it. And then, and then tries to figure out how to embarrass her and demean her and belittle her. Mm -hmm. And then publishes these photographs. That, that, so she has done nothing that deserves this conduct. Porn. Well, one, it's a loaded term, meaning it is loaded with judgment. Mm -hmm. But two, and most importantly, she did not take that photograph with any intention that it would be published for the public. So it is not revenge or porn. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I've said that the term should be cyber exploitation, right? Which is the use, right, of cyber technology in a way that is, it has been designed and intended to exploit predominantly women. And, you know, on that subject, as with so many things, there's still, we're still at a point in America where people are really uncomfortable with women's sexuality. And so there's so much judgment that attaches with that. And, and, an, and an attempt to shame women, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I could go on with more detail, but this, this is you the range that. of things that I think about when we're on this topic. Kamala versus Trump is a much tougher matchup, but not for her. As much as Donald tries to pretend like she's an easier opponent, he's clearly not happy about this. Considering his criminal background and hers as a prosecutor, that's understandable. Of course, critics will point out that Kamala is polling only a couple points above Biden, and she still lags behind Trump in key swing states. So, what's her path to victory? Well, it's much stronger than you'd think. The problem with the Kamala versus Trump polls until now was that they were just hypothetical. Most people's perception of her was built on very limited exposure and a strong association with whatever they already thought of Biden. But now it's official, and Kamala will be out front and center, creating a brand for herself and drawing a contrast with her opponent. She'd also be drawing contrast with Biden, considering she's actually an excellent communicator. Before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. According to the latest poll, she's also outperforming Biden across the board. But it's important to acknowledge that Trump is still the front runner. Any Democrat, whether Biden, Harris, or someone else would be playing a game of catch up. The argument for bringing her in is that she's much more capable of winning that game. All of Biden's age problems have now been dumped onto Trump. The law and order argument doesn't even land against an attorney general, let alone when you're a convicted felon, and a debate between the two would be brutal. Obviously anything could happen between now and November, so it's hard to speculate, but it's clear that this is now a much more competitive race than it was a few days ago. Here's the thing, right? Each party, not Trump, but the party has valid points and each party has very dangerous points for me. So I, I just don't know. I don't. And that's just me being honest. See, a lot of people are not going to be honest with y'all. <laughs> a lot of people are going to tell you vote Kamala because they don't want Trump. A lot of people will tell you vote Trump because they don't want Kamala. I'm going to tell you vote the facts. And right now I don't have enough facts on Kamala to just go gung-ho with the Kamala vote. This, to be honest with you, this is how I feel right now. And now, now it's time for a new president. And all they want us to do is pick a new president. I feel like, didn't we just get out of a fucked up relationship? Maybe we don't need a president right now. Can we be single as a country for a while and maybe date a president? See how that work out for a couple months? Cause child. I just don't know. All I do know is when my grandson gets old enough to get in school and they have to discuss 2020 through 2024, I'm going to need a drink and a blunt to describe these four years. I promise. <laughs> Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about all of this. Hit that like button for me, especially my confidant. Please consider hitting the like button. Consider joining the Champagne Gang and the Fierce Fam. Become a confidant yourself. Hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. And if you're not sure about it just yet, don't worry about it. We'll leave the light on for you. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sip, Savor, and Spill. 
Until next time, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.